Hey everyone, and welcome back to TheAdventureBook.net. This is Matt Arrington, and this is episode two. Today we're going to be delving deeper into a topic that I touched on in the first episode, and that's the difference between RAW and JPEG as far as which format to shoot in your camera. Now, if you've come from a point-and-shoot camera, RAW is going to be whole new territory. It's not going to be an option that was available to you prior. Um, we're going to go over the differences and why I shoot one over another. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is RAW? Well, first of all, it's uncompressed. What that means is that you're getting all of the information directly off the sensor. Everything that the camera captured on that day. As a result, the file size is going to be larger. So you won't be able to put as many photos on a memory card. And it's going to take up a lot more hard drive space when you get it home. The next thing you're going to notice is that these photos are a little bit soft when you're shooting in RAW. Now the reason for that is that when you shoot in JPEG or uh, TIFF or any other format, the camera is deciding how sharp the photo should be, how defined the edges in the photo are. Now when you're shooting in RAW, it's up to you to make those decisions after the fact. Raw photos require post-processing. Unlike JPEG, which you might be able to print directly out of the gate, with RAW, you have to process them as far as sharpening, as well as bringing back a lot of the contrast that was lost. One of the benefits of shooting RAW is that you have the ability to change the white balance. Now, white balance will be a topic of another tutorial, but it's basically the color temperature of the scene. Is the color of the light warm, kind of orangish, or bluish, which is more on the cool side of the spectrum? The great thing is, is that if you shoot JPEG, that is locked in. But if you shoot in RAW, you're able to change it after the fact. One of the other huge benefits of RAW is that because you're getting all of the data that's captured by the sensor, you can recover highlights that are lost. If there are areas of the image that are just completely blown out and completely white, it's possible by about a stop of light to bring back the detail that's lost in those highlights. And uh, I'm going to show you an example of that shortly. RAW photos need to be exported for print or web use. Now what that means is that if you want to print it or maybe put it on Facebook or on your website, you can't just post the raw photo. It needs to be converted to some other format, usually JPEG. Now what does all of this mean? Well, to summarize, with raw you get more creative control. You're able to make a lot of these decisions rather than leaving it up to the camera to make these decisions. Now let's move on to JPEG. JPEG is compressed. Now, what that means is that the quality is slightly degraded in order to make the file smaller. So you can fit more JPEGs on a memory card and more of them on your hard drive. JPEGs are generally sharpened out of the camera. So those edges are a little, mo little bit more defined directly out of the camera, but the camera is making that decision. JPEGs do not necessarily require post-processing. Now you can, but the latitude for post-processing is not quite as great. You're not able to make so many adjustments to JPEG as you are able to RAW. But the benefit of that is that it's a lot less work. When you shoot JPEG, the white balance is locked in. So for example, if you shoot indoors under uh, tungsten lighting or a certain or incandescent lighting, but maybe you had the white balance set wrong on your camera, you really can't change that after the fact. So with JPEG, that information is locked in. When you blow out highlights on a JPEG file, when you lose detail in the brightest parts of an image, generally that information is gone. You can't recover that. Now, one of the huge benefits of JPEG is that you can print it or use it on the web without any processing. You could just export it directly. One of the main problems I have with JPEG is that the camera is deciding saturation, contrast, sharpening, white balance, a lot of really important decisions that I want control over. So you're leaving that up to the computer 
uh, or little computer that's in the camera. Now to summarize all this, JPEG is easy to use. Now between these two formats, which one do I use? Well, it's going to be kind of obvious. It's raw. <laughs> I am a bit of a control freak, so I need that creative control. It is more work. Uh, just be mindful of that. You're going to have to process these photos. But it's a lot more rewarding, and you have a lot more latitude to make adjustments. So let's go ahead and run into Lightroom and see what we can do with a RAW that we can't do in a JPEG. And here we are in Lightroom. Uh, this is a photo that I took up at Red Rock Canyon, uh, I believe in September of last year. It's not the most exciting photo out of the series, but I picked it to um, illustrate a point. Uh, one of the truly magical aspects of shooting in RAW is that you can pull detail from the highlights that you thought were lost. Now, if we look at the sky here, one of the first things you'll notice is that there's a lot of bright white here in the clouds, areas that have just completely lost detail. Now, to confirm that, let's take a look at the histogram here in the upper right-hand corner. You'll notice on uh, the right side of the histogram, all of those values are slamming up against that right wall. That means that's data that if I'd shot in JPEG would have been lost, but I've shot in RAW. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Now, Lightroom has a cool little uh, tool that is sort of a highlight indicator. And if I hover over this little arrow in the upper right hand corner, it's going to indicate in red the areas that have lost detail completely um, as far as in the highlights. Now I'm going to click on that and that's going to uh, continue to show me that indication here. Okay. Now there's a few different ways to recover highlights, but the easiest and simplest one is the little recovery slider here. If I drag this to the right, you're going to notice that those highlights come right back. Okay. It's, it's truly magical what you can do with RAW. Um, and if I bring the exposure down a little bit, you can see just how much detail we've gotten back in those cloud areas. Now, what would I do with this image from here? Well, I'm not going to go too far into detail, but I might take this little adjustment brush here, and I'm going to create a new effect. It's going to be darken or burn um, from the film days. And I'm just going to paint onto the sky a little darker here. Okay. And I'm going to decrease the exposure here. This little uh, tool set here is telling Lightroom what you want this brush to do to the image. This is really helpful if there are areas of the image you want to increase brightness, exposure, contrast, you want to brighten the colors a little bit. Um, it's really great to be able to focus on just certain areas of the image. I'm just going to show you a little bit of what you can do here. Now if I bring down the exposure just slightly, look at all of the detail I have brought back in the clouds. It was a beautiful day and uh, the clouds had just broken. So. A little bit of a before and after. I know uh, people like those. Oh, let's turn off that highlight indicator. So before, now this is what you would have captured in JPEG. Even if you would have decreased the exposure, if you would have darkened the image, these white areas would still be white, okay? which is sort of unusable, and an after. And that's just amazing, something you can do in RAW that you can't do in uh, JPEG. And now I want to illustrate one of the other amazing aspects of shooting in RAW, um, and that's the ability to change the white balance of a photo after the fact. Now you have some limited ability to do that in a JPEG, but um, not without the degradation of quality of the photo. Now this is a photo, uh, not necessarily a landscape photo, but it does illustrate the point. Um, this is my girlfriend Beatriz, and uh, here we are in uh, Grand Canyon National Park eating at the lodge. She is anxiously awaiting our food. We're, we're very starving at this point. Um, but you'll notice a lot that if you don't quite nail the white balance, especially in indoor environments, the image will have a, a clear color cast. In this image, it's very, very orange, and that's not really what it was when, it, when I was there. Now, there's a few different ways to adjust this. Uh, here on the right hand side, we have WB, that stands for white balance. Now it's showing me what I shot the um, photo in, which in this case was daylight, or we can actually move to as shot. This is exactly what I shot there. Um, that's what my camera chose as the white balance because I had my white balance on auto. 
Now I can select one of these other options here to correlate with the type of lighting I was in. So um, if it was daylight or cloudy, or if you're in shade, um, if you're in fluorescent lighting or tungsten lighting, which is the case here, you can change it to that white balance and it kind of corrects the colors in the image. Now I could just select one of these. I can select tungsten if I'd like, because I know this is tungsten lighting. And as you see, the colors are a lot more natural. This is exactly what it looked like when I was there. I'm gonna increase exposure a little bit just so you guys can see detail better. Now there's another way um, to change the white balance. If you're not quite sure about the kind of lighting you're in, you have a little eyedropper tool right here, okay? Now if I click on that, I can select any color in the image that represents sort of a medium gray, okay? So um, her little sweatshirt here was about a gray color. So I'm just gonna click on that and it automatically corrects the rest of the image for that color, okay? Now this works in just about any image where you have something in the scene that should be white or should be sort of a medium gray. Now I'm gonna show you how to use white balance to take more creative control over the photograph. Um, this is a photo, this is pretty much uh, straight out of the raw um, that I took at the Zion Narrows last September. Now, when I was there, um, there was a great deal of this orange light being cast on the, on the wall ahead of us here. But here in the shade, there was a lot of blue. And when I was there, I was very struck by the contrasting colors. Now, I had my white balance on auto. I was a little lazy here. But um, the great thing about shooting in RAW is, again, I can go back and adjust that. Okay. Now, I can either select one of these presets here. But for my taste, I want to actually take a little more control over that. So you have the color temperature slider here, as well as the tint slider. We're just going to be dealing with the color temperature slider here right now. Okay. Now, as you'll notice, on the left-hand side, you have blue. On the right-hand side, uh, sort of a yellow color. Okay. So I know there was a lot of blue here that's not being shown. That's because the color cast is, uh, the white balance was improperly um, metered by the camera. So I'm just going to click on this, drag, uh, this slider and drag it to the left here. I don't want to go too crazy with it. Okay. And I just get it exactly to what it looked like when I was there. Okay. Now this is a preliminary adjustment. I did a few more things after this. Um, for example, you can bump up the, the saturation a little bit to increase the vibrancy of those colors. But um, this just gives an example of how you can use white balance after the fact to take more creative control over your photos. And that's something that would not necessarily be possible with JPEG. You don't really have much control over that once that white balance is baked into that JPEG file. And sort of a before and after to give you a little bit, a little bit of an idea about what that adjustment does. And here is a uh, raw photo that I took in uh, Valley of Fire State Park here in Nevada um, about a year ago. Now, this hasn't been really adjusted in any other way, but um, I just want to illustrate one other point here. If we go to the adjustment panel here, and we scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see a little detail area. And this allows you to adjust the sharpening. Now, what you'll see here is that there's already sharpening adjustments made. Whenever you import a raw file into Lightroom, it's going to do what's called pre-sharpening. So as I explained in the uh, slideshow at the beginning, raw photos are unsharpened, so they need to be sharpened to some extent. Um, Lightroom is doing some pre-sharpening to bring back some of the detail while you're working with the image. Now don't confuse this with uh, output sharpening. Output sharpening meaning um, sharpening it for print or for when you uh, post it on the web. This little basic adjustment here that Lightroom does automatically to RAW files um, brings back a lot of that sharpness that is lost by shooting in RAW. Well, thank you all for joining me again on uh, the Adventure Book for Episode 2. Uh, this is going to be a weekly series, um, either video tutorials on the computer through Lightroom or in the field tutorials. Um, which I'm looking forward to showing you some of those uh, in the future. Now, 
I'm going to be implementing a brand new part of the show. Uh, toward the end of every episode, I'm going to leave room open for questions. Okay? So if you have any questions, uh, maybe something I didn't touch on or something you'd like me to answer, go ahead and email them to theadventurebookatme.com. And uh, hopefully if I pick it, I'm going to uh, discuss it at the end of the show. Now please... Uh, feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode or any other any other episode on my YouTube channel, um, where you're probably watching this, or on Facebook. I, I really love to get feedback. I love to find out what you guys think and what you want to see in the future. Thank you so much again for joining me, and adventure is out there. <laughs>